Hi, guys. Um, I can't see any of you, but now um, I'm very excited to be here. My name is Pete Nowak. I'm the creator and showrunner of How to Get Away with Murder, which um, starts again tonight. 10 o'clock, people. Get ready. Um, so I'm very excited. I'm here in my office. You can see the sun behind me. Um, and I'm going to answer some of the questions you sent in and uh, not tell you any spoilers. But I'll hint at fun things uh, that you guys want to know. All right, so I have a handy little box here um, of questions you all sent in. So let's go. Number one, um, will we find out the backstory behind Frank's loyalty to Annalise this season? Ooh, good question. He does seem pretty loyal. Um, we will get hints about their backstory. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but we are going to be flashing back a lot to 10 years ago. Um, we're going to be finding out what happened to Kristoff, uh, what happened to Wes's mother. Um, and part of that might include some Frank and Annalise backstory. Um, we also really need to answer the rest of the season what happened between Frank and Sam. Obviously, they had like a secret pact that we discovered way back at the end of season one that led Frank to kill Lila for Sam. So we are going to be exploring that little mystery and giving you... Um, a very complicated answer to that by the end of the season. So uh, we only have six episodes left. We have a lot of ground to cover, uh, and I think it's going to be really exciting. Okay, next. What's your favorite Annalise Keating quote? Hmm. Um, that's weird because I write a lot of those lines. So I'm like basically saying, like, what's my favorite thing that I wrote about myself? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I think. My favorite, you know what, I'm going to go back to the pilot. I loved, um, and this is really giving Viola Davis credit, which um, is all I should really do because we have her to thank for the show, um, is when she said, I bet you the boyfriend did it. And I think she said it more like, I bet you the boyfriend did it. And it's just a, such a simple line. It completely set us off on our mystery that first season. Uh, and she sold it with so much intrigue and simplicity. Um, so that's kind of the one I always go back to that I remember sitting on set watching that and just saw how alive uh, the show came to me all of a sudden. Thank you, Viola. All right, next. Uh, which of the Keating Five characters are you most like? Uh, I was in this um, festival panel thing in Atlanta and someone asked me this uh, just this past weekend. And the weird thing is each of the Keating Five are parts of my personality, I think. Um, I think when you create a show and you're a writer, um, you really write um, from your gut. Um, and the characters you create, you really want to relate to. So they're all little bits and pieces of your personality. Um, only the good parts, though. None of, none of the murderous things. I don't uh, identify with any of that. Um, but basically, like I'm, when I went to college, I felt a little bit like Wes. Like I was idealistic and kind of felt like behind the rest of my class. Um, I don't, you know, I relate more to Oliver than I do to Connor. Connor's so confident and, like, gets whatever he wants. That's really never been the case for me. Um, Asher, I think I have a silly, zany side. Hopefully I'm not um, so much of a douche, but uh, I have a little bit of that in me. Michaela, I'm definitely very type A, ambitious. Um, and really the person I've always identified with most was Laurel. Um, I think she was really quiet in the beginning of the show. Um, she kind of liked to, like, you know, hang out and watch things more. And I think the writer part of me um, prefers that. And in fact, talking to you right now, like, this is not part of my natural, like, instinct to, to be on a camera and talking to people. I'd rather much uh, watch someone do this. Um, so I think there's, there's a shy part of me that I really relate with um, Laurel, too. And I... Um, what I love about Carla is that she just, she's such a um, vivacious and fun person uh, when you meet her. She has a huge personality, and it just goes to show what a great actress she is, that she could um, kind of sit back and be the observer um, in the first season. She definitely has a lot of stuff to do now in, in these next few episodes. Um, she's got a lot, Laurel's dealing with a lot of uh, intriguing, cool stuff, so, um, but Anyway, that was a very long answer to that question. Um, hopefully it didn't bore you. I'm looking at all your names. Roxanne Davis, Valeria, Almeida. Hello, hello. Okay. How many more of these should I do, do we think? Um, 
Oh, will we ever see the Lady Justice again? Hang on. Hang on right there. I've got an answer for you. There you go. So yes, you've seen it. Um, we actually all have one of these in our office. It's our favorite thing in the world. We um, hit each other on the head with them whenever we get mad at each other. No, we don't do that. Uh, but in terms of the show, will we see the Lady Justice again? Uh, I won't say one way or another, but uh, it seems like she needs to make an appearance. I think that would be a fun thing. Okay. I think we only have a few more of these, right? Okay. I have some friends here helping me. So uh, if I look off screen, that's what I'm talking I'm not talking to myself. Okay. Best advice you've ever received? Oh, yeah. Um, I've gotten a lot of advice. Like, as a writer who first got his job in Shondaland, I've had, like, a ton of mentors. Shonda, Betsy Beers, Mark Wilding, Alan Heimberg, Jenna Vans, Krista Vernoff, Joan Rader, Tony Phelan. Like, I've grown up with all... I've grown as a writer with all these great teachers, so... The best advice I've ever received, you know, one of the things um, that I think is really valuable to know, especially if some of you are writers out there, is um, Mark Wilding, who we call the Hammer. He works on Scandal right now. He's um, amazing. He told me, you know, 90% of this business is perseverance and determination and basically hard work. It's not about talent. It's not about um, luck. It's basically you get knocked down again and again and again, and you just have to get back up. So. Sometimes when it's like the middle of the night and we're writing a script here and it seems like it's all going to go to hell and we're tired, um, I remember that because it's, it's really just about putting one foot in front of the other. So that's that. Must-haves when writing. Food, music, or silence are all of the above. Um, huh. You know what? I need silence. I need quiet. I do a lot of writing at my kitchen island really early in the morning when it's just me and my dog. Uh, and I think that helps me because it just, it doesn't feel like I'm, uh, there's any pressure on me. It's just me and the computer and what's, what I'm hearing in my head. Uh, so I don't have to worry about like the budget and the fact that they're shooting something tomorrow that, and they need these pages for. So I try to take the pressure off myself and just, uh, be in a little bubble. Um, no music not really food because how can you eat and type at the same time like I use food as a reward like if I write a scene I'll go and like give myself an ice cream sandwich or something all right um how many more of these two let's do two more okay two more um vodka tequila or red wine oh that's a good question all of the above uh we had our wrap party last night so I have to admit I might be a tiny bit hungover uh we've all worked so hard uh, that I partook in a few uh, glasses of red wine, honestly, so I have one of those red wine headaches this morning. Um, I like my vodka, though, too. Tequila, I get too crazy, so I stay away from that stuff. Uh, Meredith Grey can have all the tequila. Alrighty, and last but not least, and um, for any of you out there watching this, thank you before we sign off, but um, what inspired you to make this amazing show? Well, that's very nice, whoever wrote that, to call it amazing and not... Um, crazy or ridiculous, uh, which is sometimes something else I hear. <laughs> um, what inspired uh, so many things? I think I've always uh, liked stories about normal people in kind of extreme situations. Um, one of the books I loved as a kid was Lord of the Flies, so there's a little bit of that um, going on in the show. I think, you know, like our characters have sort of been thrust onto this island of crazy with Annalise. Um, I also loved uh, thrillers growing up, and they don't really make movies like that anymore, like Presumed Innocent and Fatal Attraction, uh, Jagged Edge. If you haven't seen those, you should rent them. They're awesome. Um, but I loved legal thrillers and murder mysteries, and um, I definitely was inspired by all of those um, great movies back when. All right, people, I think that's everything. I'm sorry if we didn't get to answer all of your questions, but maybe we'll do this again in the future. Um, and again, tonight, uh, the episode is called What Happened to You, Annalise? Um, and we're going to find out, we're going to start to find out a lot more about her backstory and Wes's backstory, uh, which is, you know, the back half of the season. Um, and it's really twisted. I just came up from the editing bay where we, um, were screening episode 13 and it's bananas. So, uh, and every episode is pretty bananas. 
Um, so I think you'll like it, and I hope you like it. Um, I know I do. And thank you so much. Uh, or I guess we're going to sign off now. Bye.